in this segment, we are going to uh, go through the part of the script that determines the flow cell clustering and mapping of the data. So after we perform the density transforms with the, the transformation of the data using the densities histograms, we run the next set of script, which is to start the data into uh, dimension, uh, the actual hydroparameter analysis that we're interested in. So the first step in next is to select the data for dimensionality reduction. So if previously in your parameter file, you have set that only certain numbers of cells are gonna proceed forward, via the downsampling, as here I've set 2000 events per flow file, it's gonna select that now in this next command. So we're gonna run this segment command to enter. And you can see now, instead of variable numbers, we only have 2000 per event or 8,000 per condition. The next part is to run flow sum clusters. So we're gonna set the seed, and then we're gonna read the FCS data as a flow step. Again, we get the warnings, which is uh, due to the problem with the flow to transformation and the data being slightly off scale. And now we're gonna transform the data. and build a SOM object. So SOM stands for self-organizing map. And you can read the paper by uh, Sophie Van Gassen uh, to learn more about this procedure. Flow SOM is relatively quick uh, compared to TISNI. So this shouldn't take too long. Again, the length of time will depend on how much data you're trying to analyze. So now it's proceeding. All right, and that's done. Now it's gonna generate clusters and you can see that um, each of these colors here corresponds to a cluster on the self-organizing map. And you can see that not all of them uh, are perfectly mapped on the two-dimensional plot because it is multiple dimensions that we're dealing with. So like the dark blue and the light blue are both split up in this view. All right, next section. Next section. And these are all fast. And now these are the clusters. So this is telling us about the structure of the clusters that we generate. The first cluster is always gonna be the biggest and so on down the line. You can change the number of clusters that you want um, in the parameter file, which is here, flow sum dimensions, 10, um, and FCS clusters, 10. 10 is usually fine. If you have um, something that's a really diverse set of cells like total CD45 tells themselves you may want to try to uh, cluster higher. But the thing is that basically what you're going to be doing in every case is splitting apart the smallest cluster into more clusters. You won't be splitting the larger clusters. Uh, so really what you should be doing if you need to subcluster is setting the starting clusters yourself in Flojo by selecting T cells or B cells or something more specific like regulatory T cells or NKT cells as your starting point. And then looking at that to say, all right, how does the my phenotype in my NKT cells change in terms of the clusters, rather than trying to both look at uh, phenotypes and cell types at the same time, which is what you would be doing uh, by running a total CD45 gate. All right, and now we're going to save the cluster counts, which outputs a CSV file into your output folder, which tells you about the frequencies of your data um, here. So these are the number of cells in each cluster, in each sample. And you can see that cluster one is more common in blood than say spleen um, relatively. Um, and you can, with this, you have the data already in Excel. So these are numbers of cells and you can convert these to percentages or so on and plot them uh, downstream. So it's just a convenient way of 
getting access to that data for those of us who are proficient in R. Right, and then we're going to do a, a data density plot again. So we're going to plot histograms of the data. And the difference uh, here is rather than um, plotting the data per sample, we're now going to be able to plot it by cluster. So we're going to see what those clusters are. So if we go into density, you can see we have our density figures, uh, density samples from before, which we're looking at by individual flow sample. Um, and it's still working on the other one. But this one will be by cluster. So we can say those clusters one through 10, uh, what markers are expressed on each one. Here it comes. Right, and that's done. So here we have clusters and they are imaginatively named at the moment, clusters one through 10. And you can see at the top, that's all the data together. And then if we look at cluster one, we can go across and see, oh, look, it's uniform for CD4, which in our CD4, in our, because we started with a T cell population, it makes sense that the first thing it might do would be pick out uh, one set of, of cells. And you can see that it has, um, separate on CD4, but it hasn't entirely separated on CD, the injected CD45. So that population is still bimodal. So this is what I was talking about before is that it won't then split that. So if you wanted to change how um, it's split, it's clustering the data, you might need to go back and change the transform. If you see that it's not separating based off of one marker, like for instance here, PLRG1 is separating out here, Helios is separating out here. If you see that it's just not separating on a marker, then maybe you have the transformation set in such a way that it doesn't separate well. Uh, like say PD-1 here, because a lot of the cells are sort of intermediate, it may never separate on that. That's just the biology. All right, so we can go across and we can see that, oh, cluster two contains CD8. What's more interesting is that both cluster one and cluster two have high CD62L. So they're both naive subsets, which makes sense. We have naive CD4s and naive CD8s. And because those are clusters one and two, that means those are the most common cell types present in our T cell population, which again, should make sense from a biological perspective. Right. Now, what we should do at this point is go back into the parameter file if we are satisfied with the clustering, um, and name these clusters. So rather than calling them clusters one through um, 10, we can actually name them specific clusters. So you can see this is the part here where the clusters are being named. Um, And if we go into a previous parameter file here, we can copy the text that I have for changing the naming. Uh, there may be a better way to do this. But if you look here, um, starting at cluster parameter line 188. Well, it's a different number because I have different um, things in the parameter file. But basically, FCS clusters 10. And then instead of having this automated naming of one through 10 plus cluster, we can name them in this way. So if I copy this and paste it in here, then my clusters would be named in order, this, 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 and so on. So cluster one would be called this, cluster two would be called this, cluster three would be called this, and so on. So we need to look at our histograms and come up with appropriate names for these clusters. All right, so let's um, zoom in again and look at this and say we decided that cluster one was naive TCD4s, cluster two was naive CD8s, and so on. So we would type that in here.
and maybe in some cases you don't actually know what the, the biological or the immunological name for a subset is, you can just say positive or negative for a particular marker. So let's have a look at cluster three. So this is FOXP3 positive. So we can just say FOXP3 positive. Cluster four, it has CHI67, it's CD4, and it's ICOS. So we could say CD4, CHI67, ICOS. Cluster five, my 6 c positive here. The uniformly positive, so I'll call them that. Now these aren't going to be particularly useful names. We need to come up with better names, um, but this is also just an example data set. Um, walk you through it. So cluster six looks like it has CXCR6 on it. So let's call it that. Cluster seven. There's CD8 positive and injected CD45 positive. And ideally, you want to come up with a name that's unique for each one. Um, And you want to keep the name relatively short so that it fits on your uh, plots. Cluster seven. Um, we just did seven, so eight. Fox B3 positive again, Chi 67 positive. Nine. Chi 67 positive, CD8 positive. And finally, cluster 10. What's distinguishing this? CXCR6. And it's negative for CD4, negative for CD8. So we could say double negative CXCR6 positive. So that's probably gamma delta P cell. All right, so we've named that, we save that. We want to take this whole section and command enter that, um, close the other one. And then we want to go back up to the top and run the whole script again to that point. And when that's done, so it's going to take a few minutes, what you will get is a new cluster file, which will have those new names here instead of clusters. And then all of your uh, future outputs will have the defined names that you have created for your clusters on your heat maps, on your histograms, and so on. Uh, and if you want to change those, again, you just change them in your parameter file and run the script again. <laughs>